Hello and welcome to another tutorial from Cami Page Boutique. I'm Brooke Tannehill and today I'm going to show you how I made this super fun three color ombre tumbler with foil star detail. This cup is so easy to make and this technique can be used to create so many pretty things. As always, all the products I use will be listed in the description below and you may even find a coupon code or two that saves you some coin. Also, come join our exclusive Facebook group where you could take advantage of upcoming freebies and giveaways that you aren't going to want to miss. So without further hesitation, let's go ahead and get started. For this design, I am using a 20 ounce straight skinny from Parish Tumblers and I did this cup on a live where I'd be getting a couple of questions about how I prep my cups, how long it takes and what I do. So I am just showing you how I remove the sticker from the bottom, grab an 80 grit sanding block and just really rough up the surface. It's nothing too complicated and all I'm doing is removing that external coating from the cup, spraying it down with alcohol and then I wipe it down with a fiberless cloth paper towel. That's that's all this is. Um, pretty much just making sure that I have a nice surface for my next layers to adhere to. I then grab my cheap makeup brush and not cheap in the negative sense of the word. I absolutely love this thing. And I am using Rosebud from Miss Lillian's No Wax Chalk Paint to lay down my paint base for the glitter. So we will be doing a three color ombre. But what I like to do is, and I've definitely, it really depends on the design and what you're trying to accomplish. So I'm going to be using three different pinks. So I just wanted the same pink base for all of it. What this does is it really melds the glitter colors together if they're not in the exact color family and really gets it to blend well for the overall look. You could obviously use three different pinks if you really wanted to show more of that contrast, but this is just a little bit of a hack that I like to use if I'm just doing a three color ombre just to kind of get some variation and don't really want the stark contrast between the three colors. Now, I love this paint because it has self-leveling properties so you do not see the brush strokes and it dries completely in about 10 minutes on a tumbler. So I am just using my heat gun because I'm live and I'm sure while some people think that watching paint dry is fun, I do not. So I sped up the process and it cut down the dry time to about two minutes and then I moved into my second coat of paint. I like to have a nice even coat of paint as much as possible. You can see there that the second coat really wasn't necessary, but I did it just to make sure that I'm laying down that nice, smooth, even base for my three glitter colors. Once I was happy with the paint coverage, I did grab my heat gun, but I did it for two reasons. The first one was to make sure that the paint was nice and dry, but the second is also a hack that I sometimes remember to do, I sometimes don't, but just simply warming the cup before you apply your epoxy for the epoxy application of glitter helps it to go on so much smoother and you get a lot more even coats that makes the whole process just a lot, just so much easier. So. Warm your cup, uh, granted I'm drying paint as well, but this really does set up the next ombre for a lot of success so that you don't get a lot of the streakiness and unevenness of the epoxy. So since this is only a 20 ounce and usually I'm working with 30 ounces, but I thought, hey, why not switch it up? I'm really only using a about a milliliter of epoxy. So I am just evenly spreading it over the surface. Now, I'm not doing the absolute bare amount of epoxy because the three glitters I'm using are a little bit on the chunkier side. So you wanna make sure that you have enough to adhere to. If you're using finer cuts, you can use literally the bare amount of glitter as possible. But then I let that even out, like you can see right there, it's all nice and smooth. And then I grabbed Mama from Bougie Glitter Boutique. I am so obsessed with this pink color, I can't even begin to tell you. It is a beautiful pinky purple opal. It's not an opal, iridescent, I guess you can say. And all I'm doing is I'm just laying down the base color of where I want this to be. So focusing on that bottom rim, tilting the cup down. Again, we're doing a three color ombre and just laying the groundwork for what we want the ombre to look like. So the way I do it is the how I'm tilting it. And you can see there is I'm lightly tapping, but the angle at which I'm at really covers the entire bottom of the cup. So you don't have to worry about the butt. I then grab blush from Bougie Glitter Boutique. And again, this is, it's just such a pretty light pink. And I say again, cause I've used it on several cups during my lives and I think even a tutorial or two, but all I'm doing is I'm angling the cup down at 
the opposite direction, focusing on that top rim and letting the glitter cascade down. And I'm just literally laying down the groundwork. We don't want to do it too heavy because we're going to come back in and blend these colors, but just starting to get the glitter to fade into that center and allowing the glitter to just cascade down about a third of, that way, of the way down the cup to lay again the groundwork because you don't want to get it to too heavy because when you come and apply your third glitter color, it will not blend with the other two. Finally, right here, I am gra grabbing bubble gum from Bougie Glitter Boutique, and this is an amazing hot pink glitter. I love it, it's so vibrant, and the cut of the glitter is just absolutely amazing to where it still has a lot of sparkle. You don't always get that with other neon colors, but this is perfect. So what I do is I just came in in the middle of the cup and laid down a nice like stripe, and then I am just holding the cup at the other two angles to start to blend them into the other colors. So you can see I'm going back and forth. I started with the angle of the cup pointing down towards the top rim and now it's pointed down towards the butt and I'm just starting to blend that bubble gum into the other two colors. Even with the rough ombre that you see there, I, I liked it. I love this color scheme and I do go back and forth and blend it even further, but the rough ombre looked really good and I think it's because these three colors just really, really go together. So I'm coming back again with the bubble gum and just lightly sprinkling. So you can see how high up I'm holding the glitter shaker and I am just using my index finger to just tap out some more glitter to blend that in. I grab the hot mama again and I'm just going back over that blend between the two and the only thing like I can't emphasize this enough do not feel bad about going back and forth on your ombre doing it is just going to blend your colors further and it's going to get more of that seamless transition that you really want and that truly sets apart some of the best ombres out there so don't feel bad you're not a failure you're actually putting out the best product possible and really taking the time to care about your ombre I grabbed the blush one more time and just went back and forth until I was happy with the placement. I let this dry for probably about two to three hours, sealed it really well with Rust-Oleum 2X clear gloss spray paint, and then I went into one coat of Artistry's one-to-one -one fast set, mixed up about 30 milliliters, let that dry for about three hours, and then I went into the next steps of this cup. One thing I forgot to record and I want to point it out because you can see it right there. I did use my Dremel to expose the top layer of stainless steel on this cup before moving into applying the shape tape, but it's so important that you do that that I wanted to call it out. But now on to the star of the show. See, see what I did there. Um, I cut out this shape tape and the star um, SVG will be available in the Cami Page Facebook group. But I cut out the SVGs using um, artistry shape tape. I cut them out using the vinyl plus setting and I removed all of the extra shape tape and just left the shapes that we want to use on the cup. So again, this is just shape tape. I'm applying the stars every which way. And I'm leaving the top sticky or the preventative sticky paper <laughs> on the top of the cup so that I can see the placement and I'll go through it. But there's no rhyme or reason for how I'm placing the stars. I'm just making sure that I like the placement, I guess, more so than not. And that I'm also leaving enough space between the stars because we will be doing a bit of an offset and you want to make sure that they're not so on top of each other that you can't add the vinyl that you need to. So just make your way around the cup make sure to keep that top paper on there for as long as possible because I have found that if you touch it it does have a tendency of removing some of the stickiness and we want this thing as sticky as possible but just keep it on there and make sure just to move it around until you're happy with the placement and then we will move on to applying the foils. Once you're happy with the um, shape tape placement, I am grabbing this amazing leopard print foil from Artistic Painting Studio. I remove the top layer of the paper from the shape tape and I just apply the foil over the top of it. I make sure to really rub it down, but you can see just how amazing this foil comes off onto the shape tape and how beautiful and vibrant it really is. I know these are darker colors, but the color and the texture really come through. I love this leopard print. It's so beautiful and I just was so impressed with this technique. 
I cannot take credit for this because I know there are a couple other makers out there that have done this, but Melissa Robinson, um, she is one of the moderators for Misfit Makers YouTube channel. She was actually the first one that I saw do this and I was just, I was blown away. I'm like, oh my gosh, that's the best idea ever. So I am not taking credit for that by any means. So um, Melinda, I love you dearly. You are one of my favorite people. So I wanted to give you a shout out in this video, but all you do is you just move around the cup, applying the foils over the tape. And if there are any spots that don't give good coverage, kind of like what I had there, don't be afraid to come back in with the foil, push it down to get those, um, the whole star filled in. One thing you will notice though, and I actually like this detail, is you will be able to see the glitter through the foil. It's almost a little bit translucent. It's not a huge, huge bit that you can see, but it's just enough. And I really, really, really like the way it looks. So I just moved around until I was happy with all the foil on the stars. I think it was absolutely gorgeous and I'm obsessed with this technique and how truly, truly easy it really is to do. I do want to mention this because you have some options. You do not have to do the vinyl offsets. You could just go into your final coats of epoxy and call it a day. But one thing I do want to mention is when using the shape tape in, um, this is with glitter or with a foil, you are going to want to seal your designs because um, I've had a couple instances of some micro bubbles appearing and I think it's just because there is some more air in the surface so seal your foils after this I did not and I had to literally sit there with a torch and pop all the bubbles but after I applied all my um, beautiful foils I moved into a coat of epoxy and I did that because I didn't want the transfer tape um, that I used to put on my vinyl offsets to pull up the beautiful foil that we laid down. So this is just Artistry's regular one-to-one -one epoxy. I love this stuff. It allows me to get a nice, just quick coat, not quick coat, sorry, nice thin coat over my design elements. And it just got such an amazing shine. I just, I love this. I think this is actually my favorite epoxy from Artistry, um, but I only use it when I can wait the full 12 hours for it to dry. But man, look at that sparkle. It's so beautiful. I just love this stuff. Once I have that nice, just even coat on the base of the cup, I'm taking 10 milliliters of the same epoxy, mixing in Wonder from Bougie Glitter Boutique. And I'm just doing this because I have found that this is the easiest method for applying like little glitter details here and there that just offer just like that really just extra oomph. And it doesn't require me to add 10 hundred million extra coats of epoxy to get a nice smooth cup. So I'm just taking the um, glitter and epoxy mix and just kind of painting it on where I want that extra bit of sparkle. So focusing up at the top rim and just in between the stars, but I'm also taking into consideration where the vinyl offsets of the cup will be because I don't want to kind of add too much detail where I'm going to be covering it up with vinyl anyway. So I just kind of painted it on every which way. I kind of went overboard, but I still think it turned out pretty. Um, but you can either skip this step or um, add more if you wanted to. But I think it really added to the detail and added some just super pretty opal um, sparkle. And since Wonder is a mix of different cups of opal, it just melds into the colors and almost enhances them. So that's why I took this but um, or added this bit of glitter but I let this cup turn for about 12 hours and then I did come in with another coat of Artistry's one-to-one -one facet because it is a lot thicker I could get a nice even cup and then I came in to sanding that you see here. Now you could go into another coat of epoxy and hope for the best that it evened out but because we added more of that little glitter detail around the stars, I felt like the cup was getting a little wavy. So I just have my Ryobi orbital sander and I am just rocking the cup back and forth. Granted, after it is fully dried and you're following the time allotments on the bottles for when you can sand. And I am just sanding down and making it a nice even surface. I wanted to do this because first off, big things that I say are sanding and sealing make all the difference with cups but I also didn't want to lay down the very like straight lined decals and have that be uneven because it you would be able to see it when um, you went into your final coats of epoxy and it just wouldn't look nice so I'm just literally holding the orbital in place rocking back and forth I go wash the cup with soap and Dawn dish or <laughs> soap and Dawn dish soap with Dawn dish soap and water, let that dry. And then here you can see I'm applying the vinyl offsets. 
So if you saw me start the offsets on my live, you know I first chose a pink opal and I went back and forth with a bunch of different vinyl colors and none of them really looked great. So I landed on black and I think it really set off the stars and the darkness of the leopard print. But I'm just coming through and applying the offset, which is just four stripes at that kind of outline the back portion of the stars and the top and the bottom. And again, this is a total skippable step if you don't like them. I just think it added a lot of extra detail to the stars and kind of set them off with the foil design. And I just move around the cup and outlining where I want them to lay. Now, I chose to keep the offsets all the same like placement throughout the cup. You could honestly change it up if you wanted the four, like the longer lines on the bottom, the top, whatever you did, you want, whatever you do, it, whatever floats your boat, it works. There's no right or wrong. I just kept, decided to keep it standard issue, I guess you could say, but I think it could also be cute if you just switch it up here and there, but I just make way around the cup. Um, this design, like the star itself is actually from Creative Fabrica. So if you want just the star, you could absolutely, I can link it below, but I actually changed the size of the stars, um, laid them out for a template for a 20 ounce um, straight skinny cup. So that file will be available in the Cami Page Facebook group. Um, but you can just see here that I just make my way around the cup, taking my time. And at first I thought like the straight lines were going to be really, really hard to get laid out, but it was a lot easier than I thought it was. With all the vinyl work that we did, we do not want it to lift on us. So I am using Quick Coat from CC DIY and I am applying it over the vinyl of the stars. And I'm doing this just so we don't have any of the strips or the stripes, whatever you'd like to call them, lift when we go into our coats of epoxy. So I am just applying a nice even coat over the stars and primarily focusing on the vinyl. And I'm gonna let that dry for about one to two hours. And the reason why the dry time is so important is because if you don't let it dry, then it becomes milky and then I move into my final layer of epoxy so this cup only needed one final coat after all of the stars and vinyl had been applied I used artistry's regular one-to-one -one epoxy let that dry for about 12 hours and then this baby was done and wowza, I don't even use that word typically, but I love this cup. All of the pink and leopard print really are speaking my language. I hope this tutorial inspires you and I can't wait to see what you create. If you have any questions about any of the steps or information, please feel free to reach out and I'll be more than happy to help. As always, thank you so much for watching. It really means a lot to me. If you like this tutorial, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe so you can see future videos. You can also ring the bell so you're notified of all future cup making goodies. Thank you again. I love you guys. Bye.